When listening to a speech or reading a document, it's absolutely normal for an outsider to have a different point of view or come to a different conclusion. However, it's still hard to understand why some people blindly believe something they hear on the radio, watch on TV, or read in newspapers and on the internet. How do speakers and writers use their dominance to keep their audience's attention and captivate a crowd? Let us take a slight small peek into how these individuals use their questionable skills to become social and political magicians that sway public opinion and policy and have they mastered the art of persuasion. Welcome to Four C's One Family. Professional speakers and writers say that the key to holding the interests of an audience is to understand their concerns, needs, and dreams. Words are selectively chosen to intensify the feeling the speaker or writer wants to convey. In this way, observers can be persuaded, almost hypnotized, into believing irrefutably a particular or pre-designed viewpoint. However, some intellectuals have publicly criticized several persuasive speakers and writers too, because from their point of view, a few are using their powerful, influential positions to place false images in the minds of weak-minded followers. This type of mind control is dangerous to anyone in a free democratic society. Controversy has reached a boiling point concerning how influential individuals are brainwashing people into things against their free will that could be dangerous and cost them their and other people's lives. Countless people have been deceived into thinking that something they read or heard is absolutely accurate or factual. Many people don't have enough education or experience to help them distinguish between fact and fiction. Some simply don't have enough willpower to fend off people who have dominant personalities and personas. The honest truth may be that some people don't want to or aren't able to face reality. Most likely these people are insecure and feel they need help making decisions. People with low self-esteem look for influential leaders to guide them. The feeling of needing leadership can be dangerous, very dangerous to those who led. And if the leader is dishonest, incompetent, or lacks leadership skills, the people following can be easily confused or blinded, or in simple words, controlled. Persuasive people and organizations are or have learned how to manipulate and control sources of information in an attempt to create public opinion that is in their favor. Many countries have used their media outlets to create propaganda that puts their government positions and policies in good light. Propaganda is simply brainwashing on a large scale. The majority of opinions people accumulated over time are interpreted as reflections of their collected life experience and deeply rooted in their environment, living conditions, financial situation, religious beliefs, and social circle. For example, a poor person may have the belief that rich people are taking money from them and hiding wealth, while a wealthy person may have the belief that people from lower economic classes aren't industrious and are trying to take money from them. All nations have social and economic classes that may become in some way diametrically opposed. If class differences and struggles are allowed to get out of hand, conflict will surely arise and social and political and financial collapse 
will surely follow. The vast amount of conflicting information accessible today has turned into static that is scrambling our radio and television waves and clouding our minds. Some of us aren't sure what we really believe. And some of us may not be aware that what we say we believe comes from those who have powerful influence over our communities. When people are set in their opinions, persuading them of other options or possibilities is tough and can sometimes be dangerous. Why is it so hard for some of us to admit that our, that our point of view may be flawed or simply incorrect? What is the best way for us to challenge our minds in ways that benefit us all? And what kinds of experiences do you feel are making it hard for us to challenge our flawed opinions? If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you listen to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before it's News One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.